Hi, everyone. Welcome to another Sunday thought. Maybe that's what we should call it. Sunday thinks, Sunday ponderings, things to think about on Sunday. That's a bit long. If you've got an idea for what we can call this segment, let me know in the comments below and I'll, I'll give it some thought and maybe I'll pick the best one and use that from now on. I apologise if you've watched these last four, including the Thanksgiving special. You'll probably notice I'm wearing the same clothes. That's because I've recorded them back to back because I've been away and out of the office quite a bit. I am back on Tuesday next week, so hopefully this is the last one that gets recorded back to back. But today I want to talk to you about hydrogen. Nope, don't turn away, don't turn off. I know a lot of people who watch this channel are really against hydrogen fuel cell vehicles. And on a technical level at the moment, I find personally that they are very, very inefficient and they are also not necessarily the best when it comes to, uh, you have to carry around a large amount of, of heavy weight in the form of the fuel tanks. Um, so I don't really have any, any benefit in terms of weight over electric vehicles, at least they don't appear to have. They're quite expensive to build. They, they sometimes have trouble with power uh, because you have to have a large surface area to keep the fuel cell stacks cool. They need a lot of cooling basically. Um, but I still think that hydrogen fuel cell vehicles have a place in a future where zero or low emission or zero tailpipe emission vehicles exist. If we put aside for a second the concerns about how the hydrogen is generated, so a lot of hydrogen today is still produced by, by gas reforming, steam reforming of methane and other fossil fuels, um, and so that's not very good for the environment. But if we put that to one side and we assume that we can generate hydrogen cleanly, is there still a place for hydrogen fuel cell vehicles in the future? And I think, yes, there is. And it's brought to mind because recently we covered a story on Transport Evolved on 10 about the new Mercedes-Benz GLC F-Cell. It's a plug-in hybrid hydrogen fuel cell vehicle. So it's got a, a battery pack that's good for about 50 kilometers, about 30 miles of range per charge. Then it has a hydrogen fuel cell stack. It has some, some hydrogen fuel tanks that extend that range beyond the original um, EV only operation. So it's just like a conventional plug-in hybrid, except instead of an internal combustion engine, which burns gasoline, you're replacing that with a hydrogen fuel cell stack, which generates electricity, which powers the motors and can store the excess power generated in the battery pack because of the way that hydrogen fuel cell stacks work, that's quite a common thing. You know, you, you generate more electricity often than you actually need to use at any given point. Um, and then you use that stored electricity when you're operating in low power mode, like driving around town, you don't necessarily need to keep the fuel cell uh, running all the time. You can use power in the battery pack. And a lot of people in the past have, have kind of got cross with me when I've suggested that actually a plug-in hydrogen fuel cell car is, is probably the ultimate plug-in hybrid. I still believe it is because I'd much rather have a vehicle that wasn't burning gasoline to move along the road than I would a car with a gasoline engine. But, and there are some big buts here, there are some technical challenges to obviously the production of the hydrogen, also the weight of the vehicle. And I still agree, as many of you do, that for now, electric, battery electric vehicles are the way that most people will end up going, are, is the sensible choice for most people, especially if we assume that 350 plus kilowatt DC quick charging is going to become the norm within the next decade, which again, I believe it is. And we're going to see cars that can recharge from, you know, empty to 80% full in 15 minutes. Then we're really not going to have to worry so much about range anxiety or you know, planning extra time on road trips to refuel our car any differently to, to what we currently do with internal combustion engine vehicles. Because obviously by the time you come off the freeway, you found the gas station, you've queued, especially in Oregon, where you have to wait for an attendant to pump gas for you. You know, 
it's not a big difference when it's 15 minutes to rapid charge and you're going to get 200 miles of range. It's not a big difference. But I still think hydrogen fuel cell tech can still have a, a future in certain applications. I'm thinking about really remote areas where you might not have recharging infrastructure on the route. And, you know, if you've got a high pressure hydrogen fuel cell tank, not necessarily for passenger vehicles, but for larger vehicles, for commercial vehicles, things like the Nikola Tesla trucks with the hydrogen trucks that they're producing. I think that they are still a good option. And I know some people are going to shoot me down in flames because it's not as efficient as an electric vehicle. But again, I'd much rather we saw that as an option moving forwards and be pragmatic about it than still have diesel trucks on the road. And so I guess the question I want to try and ask, ask you all today is, are we too hard on hydrogen fuel cell vehicles? Um, I know all the jokes, you know, hydrogen's been the, the fuel of the future for the last 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, whatever years. And it has, and that's kind of funny, but we are at a point now where hydrogen fuel cell vehicles are improving. You know, I, I've driven the Honda Clarity, the original Honda Clarity, and it was terrible. And I've driven the Toyota Mirai, and it was a lot better than previous generation Toyota hydrogen fuel cell vehicles. Uh, the, the current Clarity um, fuel cell vehicle is far better than its predecessor. And so we are at a point where we're starting to see hydrogen fuel cell vehicles that are starting to make sense, at least from a practical point of view, in terms of power and delivery and packaging and everything else. I don't think, though, that hydrogen fuel cells are right for passenger vehicles just because of the size of the vehicles. And by the time you put the fuel tanks in and everything else, you've got a lot of space taken up. And unlike batteries that you can just sling underneath and forget about, hydrogen fuel cell tanks are not kind of, they're not flat. They're big round things. And they have to be big round things because they need to have the structural integrity to hold gas, pressurized hydrogen, which is, you know, flammable and explosive and stuff at 700 PSI. So it does take up a lot of space, but, but on commercial vehicles, I want to, I want to see what that future looks like. I mean, can you imagine, for example, a, another example, a, a cantilever truck system where there's a, a power uh, takeoff on the roof of the truck. So when the truck is driving through city streets, it can use the same overhead power lines as say trams or trolley buses. But when it gets out in the country, um, it's got a full battery pack, maybe for the first 200 miles, it can operate in all electric mode. And then if it needs to go further, it's got hydrogen as a range extender, not as a primary uh, fuel source, but as a range extender. And if you think about one of the previous videos I did when we were talking about range and, and how we represent range in EVs, EV range can vary quite wildly depending on how cold it is, how warm it, you know, how what the weather's like, et cetera, et cetera. And because EVs traditionally have traveled shorter distances than, than internal combustion engine vehicles, we notice, even though the differences may not be that great, we still notice them more because we're filling up, we're recharging more often. So hydrogen fuel cell, range extender, is it a good idea or not? Should we be kicking hydrogen to the curb completely? Or should we be going, okay, we've got battery shortages at the moment, global battery shortage. This might be a way of allowing people to have their 200 mile EV or their 150 mile EV, but also to have um, a range extension. And again, I'm not talking necessarily your small city cars. I'm talking about large SUVs. I'm talking about large pickup trucks. I'm talking about commercial vehicles, buses, trucks, garbage trucks, you know, things that go long distance in, in uh, especially in rural areas. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Support us through Patreon if you can. And as always, I'll see you next week. Keep evolving.